back to Mac Break Studio. We have more Motion Madness with the Motion Master. Say that 10 times fast. Mark Spencer. Steve. And he's going to walk us through jerry rigging in uh, Motion 5. Wait, it's not called jerry rigging, well, isn't it? I had to, I actually looked that up because I was thinking about this whole rigging thing. And jerry rigging or jerry rigging are both acceptable. Really? You can yeah. use them inter interoperability? Like? <laughs> Interop yeah, don't do that. <laughs> oh, sorry, me. interchangeably. Yes. <laughs> interchangeably. Okay, yeah, so now we've kind of been progressing through. Uh, publishing a motion template mm -hmm. into publishing individual parameters of a motion template. And now this is kind of sort of the, the next level that you can go where not only can you publish those individual parameters, you can take those parameters and tie them together to controls. And wow. this, is, this is where things get really interesting. So, so like one control will manipulate all of these other controls behind the scenes. It's like scene. having a marionette where you are just using one thing to have all the arms and legs move. Yeah, it's, it's quite, a, quite an interesting thing. And the thing is, it's really built into a lot of the content that's already in Final Cut. So one thing I'd recommend to people is when you look at the content in these browsers, effects, transitions, titles, what have you, um, don't assume that what you see in the preview, th the preview thumbnail excuse me, is what you get because often that's just one version and you can change what you see dramatically. Uh, just as a simple example and also to show kind of where rigging comes from mm -hmm. before we create our own, I have this, I'm in the transition, the, I'm sorry, I'm in the themes browser right now and I'm using this cinema theme which combines a transition and a bunch of titles that all have a similar look and feel. So sure. it's, it's like a package, right? Sure. It's a, like a, you know, your bumpers. A graphic your, design package. Yeah, graphic design package, similar look and feel. And the cool thing about it is every one of these elements can be changed quite a bit because of publishing and because of rigging. So if we go to this title that I've added to our timeline, let me just scrub through it so you can kind of see. It starts, uh, it kind of has these 3D elements floating down. A title comes on, mm -hmm. which I didn't change right here. And then it, it opens up to expose... Um, you know, expose video. Your, your video here. But what I'm interested in right here is if we go to the inspector, again, this, this first tab in the inspector, the title tab, this is where the things that the designer has chosen to publish live. Under the published parameters. Yes. And we saw we could publish individual parameters like this. There's main title alignment that allows you to move the title around because it's, and that's taking a couple elements and dragging them. But look at this, there's a shape pop-up menu here. So the shape are circles right now, but I could change them to squares. Okay. I see. So this is when you're talking about rigging to a pop-up. Yeah. These um, these shapes get rigged to this pop-up. Yeah. So I just changed a bunch of things in that motion track in that motion project just by selecting that. Or I could do triangles, and there's also a color pop-up menu. So we got blue, we've got gold, oh, um, wow, we've got gray, uh, we've got green, and each time I'm changing the color, there's multiple items in Final Cut that are all changing color, right? So before, like you were talking earlier uh, in a previous episode. If you wanted to do this, you'd have multiple motion templates. Sure. And now, folded in one motion template can be dozens or hundreds of different combinations of options. Excellent. So you can do some really interesting stuff. That's how it kind of works, but this is how you can actually do it yourself in motion. Okay, that's kind of what I want to get to here. So I've got a little um, motion title project that here. That looks familiar. It does. This is one of our, this is one of our templates. Um, and... You know, any template, that's just an aside, any template that you already own, whether a, a, a motion template or, you know, that was a preset or one that you bought from us or somebody else, those will work in Final Cut Pro 10, but you need to publish them. And we talked about that earlier, so that they show up um, in the correct place. But the, the cool thing is you can rig these to have all these additional options. So here, let's say we wanted to have some different color options. Now, of course, we talked in the last episode that we could publish the color parameter, right? Sure. But we'd have to publish it for this black spot down here, and for this light blue background, and for these blue spots. So what up here. you're saying, what you're saying is that's a lot of published parameters that show up in the published section of uh, Final Cut Pro, yes. and that's just it, it becomes overwhelming for the it, user. Not only it might be overwhelming, and here it's three or four might not be a big deal, but it's also then the user is forced to figure out a nice uh, color theme, colors that work well together. And if your primary skill set is editing. Uh, coming up with nice color themes might not be what you want to do. Sure. But wouldn't it be nice if you could give the Final Cut Pro editor the capability of just selecting something and boom, it's all color coordinated. And of course, they could always go into motion if they wanted to take it sure. further. So here's the basic idea. What we're going to do is under the object menu, we're going to create something called a rig. New rig. Okay, new rig, right. And the rig shows up uh, with this little joystick icon here, and that's kind of the, the main thing. Let me make these layers a little bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. So that's the rig, and the rig is really kind of like a group or a, a container. Sure. But sort of like a group where, where 
the controls are going to sit inside it. The controls are called widgets. Okay, so you're this, gonna rig a widget. We're gonna <laughs> sorry, rig a widget. You're gonna rig a widget. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna rig parameters to a widget. To a widget. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So the way we're, there's multiple ways to do this, but the easy way is this. First, you decide. Well, I want to have all the colors change um, when we choose something from a from a pop up menu. So I'm gonna start with the background. So right now the background's bl the bluish color. Right. And right here in the heads up display, there's the color. Right. If I right click on the word color, and before we did this in the Spectre, but you can do it right here in the heads up display, uh, can't do it, sorry. I thought I could publish it right there, I should be able to, but. I know some uh, training you could take. <laughs> I need to review that <laughs> training. So let's go over here, I could, I could use the animation menu, right. and I could publish the color directly. But I don't want that, I'm gonna choose add to rig instead. Okay, so add to rig. I don't need to create a new rig because I've already, already got the one, rig, right. but I could. So it's a sh kind of a shortcut, right? But right. I'm going to use the rig that we already have, which is called rig, rig because I didn't rename it. And then there's three different kinds of widgets or three different kinds of controls, a checkbox, a pop-up, pop -up. or a slider. Got it. Okay, those are the three kinds. I want a pop-up menu in this case, so I'll choose add a new pop-up, okay? And there it shows up. There's my widget showing up underneath my rig, and you can tell it's a widget. It says right there in the heads-up display. So I'm going to call this... Um, color theme. And you recommend na renaming these widgets? Just I, I do, so you know what they control okay. or what you want them to control. Okay, so right now if we go ahead and look in what's the widget inspector, we can see that the um, the color of this background is part of it, okay? But it doesn't actually do anything yet, so let's add two other things to it. I'm going to take this colorize filter that uh, can change the color of this background splat here, and I'm going to try right-clicking here. Nope, still not. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to right click on this parameter, remap black, add to rig. Add to rig, rig. Uh, rig. And now there's the new name. Right. Add to color, color theme. Because you rename re rename yes. the rig earlier. So now, because you could have multiple rigs, multiple widgets, and it's just important to name stuff. Hmm. Okay, so now that black splat is in there. And finally, let's just use this, this dark blue. If we, if we scrub backwards a little bit, there's this dark blue thing that comes in. So we'll just add one more. And, you know, you could be doing this with hundreds of. Uh, parameters, but we'll just use these three here. Add rig, rig, add a color theme. Okay? Right. So now... So you now have a couple of... Now we have these three. Look in the widget inspector. We've got these three different parameters that are rigged to this widget called color theme. Now it's a pop-up menu, so it has states. Called Snapchat. snapshots. Yeah, they're that. called... Each state is called a snapshot. And right now, that's the name, and they don't do anything. So here's the cool thing. What we're going to do is rename them. We'll call this first one uh, Cool. Okay, I don't necessarily call it blue, I'll just call it cool. Right. I'm going to rename the second one and I'll call it uh, warm. And I'll do this third one and I'll call it, uh, what, do you want, what do you want to call it? Uh, spring? Spring, okay. I don't know. <laughs> sure. So it doesn't matter, call them anything right. you want. Right. And then, right now if we select them, nothing changes. But this is what's so easy about this, okay? I'm going to select warm. Mm -hmm. And now, all I need to do is change these guys. So I'm going to click on these and okay. I'll select a... Uh, you know, sort of a warmer color theme. Did you did you select the warm snapshot? I don't yeah, know. I oh yeah, I see that. It warm, says warm. The okay. warm snapshot so you, is active. Got it. So now I'm changing um, each of these uh, colors. Kind of warm colors. Letter. Yeah. Warm. Yeah. Kind of warm colors. I'll, I'll make something incredibly ugly. Um, yeah, that's pretty not too warm. Bad. That's like yeah. Yeah, a little lighter up, up there. Looks like yeah. Let me come Dante's up over Inferno. here. Dante's Inferno. Yes, there. That's kind of I should name that Fiesta. Okay, but <laughs> now that I've set those, if I go back to cool, okay, I've got these two. Um, oh, look at that! It's almost like you're testing. Setup. You're testing the uh, the rig right there yep. by by just changing yep. the pop up, and that's, that's how that's doing. that's what the Final Cut Pro users are going to experience when you get it over there. They're going to be able to choose warm, cool, exactly. spring. Exactly. So setting it up is is very fast and easy to do. Wow. Um, to to make this work, it's it's really quite uh, awesome. Uh, that you can do this and it records and there's multiple ways to approach this. It's sure. just one approach So from there if you just save this and in fact um, if it was already published you would just save it and be available here we could choose to go ahead and uh, Publish it and it would be available in Final Cut and then you just use those and apply them in Final Cut And that's the basics of how you set up the rig uh, So that you can make your own projects do anything you want and this is a very simple example you can rig anything any parameters you can rig so you can choose a pop-up menu and a whole different animation unfolds 
Okay. Wow, so uh, those widgets, or excuse me, those rigs can actually again represent hundreds of parameter states right. from motion. So the end user, Final Cut Pro, when they're clicking on some, all this stuff is happening under the hood. Yes. That they're not even aware of. Yes. Yes. So that sounds it, pretty powerful. It, it is. And, and honestly, I feel like I'm just beginning to really get into how deep you can go with this. Because this is, this is a useful way to do it, but there's all kind of things you can do when you take these widgets. Uh, rig parameters to the widgets and allow them to control multiple pieces of your of your project. Excellent. So for those of you who have, uh, are kind of putting all this together, you can see some pretty amazing possibilities with Motion 5 as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, we want to thank Mark Spencer for coming in, and you want to tell us about uh, some training you have that actually kind of gets them into rigging and publishing and the whole world of... Yep, yep. So RippleTraining.com, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 training that, that you do, and uh, my motion training. And, and again, two, two kinds, Motion 5 Fast Forward, if you're brand new to motion, uh, uh, that's where you want to start. And then there's motion fi uh, rigging and publishing in Motion 5, which dives into exactly what we're talking about here. But you, you don't want that until you've got some grounding in motion because it assumes you kind of know your way around motion and really gets into doing this uh, in some detail. Uh, but those two complement each other. Excellent. So again, we want to thank you for your time, for watching Mac Break Studio. We look forward to uh, many more uh, podcasts. And so check back uh, at Pixel, Pixel Core. Um, thanks for watching.